happy that you were here. I, I, I did this presentation uh, a few months ago in London. Uh, I plan to do a little update on the things I was working on. Unfortunately, I had to spend a little bit of time in trying to set up a nice pool workshop. Uh, so I hope you will forgive me, yes, my followers, uh, <laughs> that you will forgive me for having not totally updated. So some features you will see released very soon enough. So you came to a talk I call the clash of the slashes or the divider of the division of the divider. That's it. My name is Theo, and and I just was talking this morning to somebody uh, about my history and I had to admit I did not exist a year ago. Well, physically I did, but in the pool community I was not known there, neither did I know the pool community. So I did something, uh, at that time I was being a math teacher and so a lot of stuff you will see today is basically because I was a math teacher and frustrated about many things. So my call about uh, the clash of the slashes. This is uh, what it's all about. Uh, if you have a, things like a slash, you will use it for many, many features. Probably for something like male, female, you will use it for regu regular expressions. You might use it for page number or whatever from 80, or you will use it in a uh, Directory structure, maybe you will use it in things like notations in, well, I think pretty nice American way of writing down how far you're away from something, One half a mile, or you can use it in hmm, options for uh, MS DOS if you still use it. You can use it for units, you can use it for so many things, and uh, I think this is one of the worst one. You can use the spreadsheets and say uh, cell A5 uh, divided by 6, or it's a, you can do it for bad thing. You use it for divisions. Well, you have so many slashes, even in the Unicode standards. If you look up how many slashes you have, you can use it for divisions, you can use it for fractions, you can use it for options, like I said, and the list goes on and on and on. And uh, where am I? Yes, the thing I was going to worry about is where actually that slash is coming from. We use it so many times, and actually we use it for bad reasons. And while looking at the internet for the proper thing to do a division, I ended up a keyboard in Germany, which does for me the right thing. It has a division sign. I don't know why you wanted to have a slash for divisions, but a slash for divisions is a bad thing. Mathematical divisions. This is not a division for me. Maybe for you it is, but actually it is more like this. That's a division. 3 divided by 4. Yeah, you can do like this, but there is a reason for it. If I want to do a little bit more fun like the other thing, that slash, that's a three-quarter thing, that's not a mathematical expression, that's a number. Maybe you will say, well, that's 0.75, but for me it's a number, and for mathematicians it's actually still a number. So what do we do? We have this for mathematics. We use a big line to make a division, and that has very good reasons, because in mathematics you have long expressions to use a division and then use a slash if ah, it doesn't work that way. What about this? I want to have 9 fourths divided by a half. I don't know how you would do that. You type like, something like this. Or this. This is 9 fourths divided by a half. If you're still keeping using that slash, fine, try it. It will give you a completely different result. Everybody knows what's standing here. So, <laughs> fractions. Fractions in life, they are not reals. Why not? 
for me, three quarter and 0 0.75 is a complete different story. You may say it's the same, it's not. And this is the reason why it's not the same in real life. For a three quarter, for me, is something that will probably lay in three quarter plus or minus one eighth. Ask the Americans, they will say, yes, you're right. And you in real life know exactly what I'm talking about because if I say, oh, let's walk half an hour, that's something completely different than walking 0 0.5 hours. To me, 0 0.5 hours, and well, half an hour, we have some more or less minutes. And 0 0.75, if you're doing science, 0 0.75 will roughly lay between plus or minus five thousandths. That's a completely different range, isn't it? You write it as three quarters or you write it as a 0 0.75. Now, why is this completely different? And as a fractions are for real life. We use it for dividing pizzas. And nobody will argue with me like, uh, I need a 0 0.125 pizza. Have you ever seen uh, people writing their Twitter messages and say, I got a 0 0.8, uh, what, 0 0.125 pizza today? No, nope, you don't. It's a what, eight pizza only have a half glass of milk, water, or whatever you want. So, me being a math teacher and having reasons to work with fractions, especially if you're doing uh, secondary school and the lower pass and the first entrances of math, you're doing lots and a lot of things with fractions in your mathematical expressions. And I was thinking, I want to do something with fractions in my Perl code. I want to work with that. And that's not the real thing. I happened to talk with uh, our Perl 6 guy. And he told me that um, in Perl 6 there had something very funny. It's called rationals. Yes. Rationals are actually just fractions. Am I right? Yeah. yeah. So Perl 6 does work with fractions, rationals. I'm not happy to hear that. So what did I find on CPAN for working with fractions? And I was, I was still admit, I was new to the Perl community. And I made some big mistakes at that time. I found a module written by this guy. And I didn't know who Dave Cross was. And I said, I, I like your module, but there are some things wrong with it. So me telling Dave Cross there's something wrong with it, and we had some nice interesting discussions. Like, uh, I want to use your module, but I want to extend it a little bit. And I heard extending Perl is, well, you have your reasons how you do extending Perl. So there was a thing like how to create a fraction in his module. That's just a nice thing to say, I want a new half. Yeah, that's how you create a half. But I wanted to do a more natural way of writing fractions. What if I wanted mixed fractions? The simple way to say mixed fractions. I'll show you what I mean with mixed fractions. What about this? A new number of fraction thing with three parameters. Oh, it's one and two thirds. You say no. it's one and two thirds. <laughs> okay, that's one and two thirds, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I would say this is the way you make one two thirds. But everybody knows if you're doing a extension on subroutines, never add your new parameters to the front. <laughs> this is what I want to do. Well, that's what will happen if you add more parameters to the front of it. Yeah, so it's going to be very nasty and luckily Dave Cross backed me up and he said if you go back one slide, let me go back one slide, here, he said no one uses it anyways, so that was more or less the way that you know, no matter what you do, you never fucking up somebody's code because nobody uses it. So he said, oh, well, I'm way too bad. He said, nobody used it, and I could do whatever I wanted. So this one, two, three, yes, I'm sorry, it will have a new positional parameter 
in front of it, it will just do the natural way, like everybody will do it. And this is how you make one, two thirds. Yeah? Okay. Now, the whole thing of Dave Cross's module is that he actually did a very, very lot of overloading. And one of the nice things with overloading is that he made it possible to interpret it constants. And when you do constants, you can actually now do these things, like you can print uh, two-thirds and three-fifths, and it will print 915. Or you can say print a half times two-thirds, and you will end up with one-third. That's what it will print. Nice? I think so. But I was not happy enough because I want my mixed fractions. So that's what it comes in. How to make mixed fractions? Now I can simply say print 2 minus 1 quarter, uh, 2 and a quarter minus 1 and a half, and it will say 3 quarters. And I think this is a nice kind of cool uh, syntax way where we always use the underscore to add things together in strings. You might discuss if I want to have the space in between. I will have the space in between. By the way, it will accept the space. I'm not happy. So, now the next thing. Because where did we start using that slash? Well, that slash is actually a thing we start using computers. Pre-computing, we had those nice things like a half, a quarter, three quarters. The proper things we have even there the eights, and we stopped using them because we didn't know how to enter them. And we the equations, the horizontal. Yes, you can do it on a typewriter, but not on your computer. Just That's fine. It's just a way of laying out. We have all kinds of nice um, fonts that will have different ways of displaying, either on top of each other or slanted. I just found a very nice one. But anyways. This is pre-computing area, but there is now also a what I call a post-ASCII era. Why still use all that rotten stuff and make it look ugly? The only way we still want it is because we're colors. But to be honest, I hate reading things like uh, "I see you in 0.5 hours," and people that are doing publishing and uh, desktop publishing things will say, "Yes, let's." Go back to normal things. If you and I want to have it in my presentation. I'm sorry, so that's the thing I have to excuse myself. I want to show you a demo where you could have a recipe for making cake or a nice recipe for making a stew. Whatever you want to cook for, what does the book always say? Four persons. Yeah, well, let's have uh, fun today, and we are now not with four people, but let's make it nice. Feast and have to multiply by six. Well, cookbooks and all these things are working with half a liter, not with 0 0.5, half with the fractions. They will say half a cup or three a quarter pint or any of those things. And I would make and I would make that module work like okay, now you can simply say um, I want to multiply this recipe by two, or uh, my wife and I are now just the only two in the house. We used to have two kids in the house. We will divide it by two, and we'll still end up with the nice fractions. Because um, the area needs to have Unicode, and we have printed fractions. So what did I do? I extended the Dave Cross's module that it will read the printed fractions. All the Unicode fractions is able to read. So you can now write in your Perl code, which is how to enter it. But you can write in your curl code, two and a quarter minus one and a half is a quarter, let's just say. Oh, yes, I'm a bad math teacher. <laughs> I'm a very bad math teacher. Now, the next thing, and that's why we come back to the thing of the clash of the slashes. This is something that's quite difficult to arrange powers, mathematical powers and fractions. Uh, the module still does only allow you to have integers as powers of your fractions. And it makes a lot of sense. It's very hard to do fraction powers of a fraction. 
that's only working when you have a Boolean method. No worry. Actually, in math, how do we do that in math? In math, we do this 3a plus a to the power of 2 fifths. It's possible to write it in math. Now, there's a little problem. That thing there does simply not exist. The upper script division slash is not there. And if you go to math, and I talk a little bit in my introduction, the signs we use in math to do the division is not the division slash at all. There's a few places where you can use that division slash. Look up your own math books from college, maybe you can find them. The big ones from calculus, if you have that one. There are only a few places where you can find the division slash and the one thing where it is used is there. No divisions in any math book will be done with a slash, except if you have a upper script slash needed for it. And it's not in the Unicode table, and there are bad reasons why it's not there. And the most stupid thing is we have slashes for anything. We have the solidus, we have backslashes, we have division slashes, we have even a fraction slash for very good, nice layout reasons. And we can do a lot more things. Now, what is Unicode here? Unicode does have the superscripts and the subscripts. Superscripts and subscripts. You can build those fractions and you can think of, hey, I want to write, like in the previous slides, a to the power of two fifths. We have all those superscripts there, lacking a few because Unicode makes some real strange decision of quadrants and uh, to the power of thirds, where it's mostly being used in old ancient ASCII, where it's used to the power of three for cubics, cubic meters and cubic feet and square meters. I wish they had just filled in those gaps there with 0, 1, 2, and 3. But the one gap that's there in the, in the Unicode range, it's just simply not filled in. Empty, not defined, not being used. So I hope soon enough I can do a proposal for that one single glyph that there will be a upper script division slash, the only division slash allowed in math to fill up that gap. And in summary, that's used by what proper use of slashes. It's not being used for mathematical divisions, it's for real uses and more and well. The last thing missing superscript of the slash for powers. Hence my thing of the clash of the slashes. You can use Unicode fractions if you want to. It's still uh, there the version of Dave Cross, my extension will be available very, very soon and you can use the funny things. And you can use it in running HTML if you'd like to do that. So you can do all kinds of nice things just to have proper fractions. Any questions? Does Unicode support like two-fifths of a fraction? Sorry? Two-fifths of a fraction in Unicode. Yes, there are two, the, the fifth range is there. Uh, you yeah, have the sixth are all there. Yes. The, the quarters, the half, the eighths, the sixths, the fifths, and then you have the one-seventh, one-ninth, and one-tenth, and that's it. Being a math teacher, I think, okay, I want the twelfths as well. For very good reasons, and we have clocks. And, uh, any more questions for this? Nothing. Smart. Clear. It was just for fun. I don't know. You, you mentioned a uh, very nice font for building custom functions. Yes. Um, uh, which one was it? Um, Adobe made a very nice font for coders, and it's called actually. Uh, what was it called? Capcation. Uh, Adobe made a very nice fixed width font. Um, it has to do with code. So, <coughs> uh, um, 
I forgot it. Look, anyways, it doesn't have a very nice thing that uh, I was talking to you uh, the other day, where uh, the, the fractional slash, if you use it, is actually not taking any space and even taking it more nice if you use a uh, long fraction, if you want 12 17 for any reason. 12 17 is not a Unicode character, but you could use the let's say the upper script 1, the upper script 2, the fraction slash, the uh, subscript 1 and the subscript 7, and that fraction slash will just combine the three characters to one character position on your screen. That was all about, wasn't it? Yeah. Can you I don't have it with me, I will tell you. I will have to look up for you. Okay. It looks very good. Nice. Anything else? No. Okay, then I have a little announcement. A little announcement. We have um, another break here. Then, after the break, we have two more sessions. And this is just a general thing. Uh, after the break, we have two more sessions. We will have lightning talks after that. But this building is a university. And I'm glad to announce that I think seven people have graduated. Well, it's holiday season, the, em the building is empty for these days, except for today, for graduation. So we will probably end up that some people might use the cantina as well as we do. Um, so be aware that we have more guests here, and I think those are the official guests and we are just pouring their building. So be kind and gentle to the people. Don't mess up their nice day. I think graduation day is more important than having a photo shop for them. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you for coming. <laughs>